Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing a book review on Opposition by Jennifer L. Armentrout, the final book in the Lux Chronicles. Dun 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 dun. So I cannot tell you a brief synopsis for this because it is the fifth and final book of the Lux Chronicles series. So if you want to see what that's about, check out the link in my description for my book review to Obsidian and yeah. Let's get into the video, but first, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell notification so you won't miss out on when I post. So, we're picking off from where we left off at the end of Origin, and that is when all of the Luxon come down and the mob mentality overwhelms D, Dawson, and Damon, and they go with the rest of the Luxon. So, we're still in the small city in Idaho, and right now we're in the house, and all there is there is Luck, Archer, Katie, and Beth. And at this moment, Katie finally finds out that Beth is pregnant, so she and Archer decide, let's go out and get her some prenatal vitamins. So, they rush to the nearest grocery store, and in the process of getting prenatal vitamins, Everything hits the fan. Luxon start arriving and they blow up the parking lot. They light a car on fire and that just causes a ripple reaction and all the people inside of the grocery store are running for their lives. And when the Luxon arrive, Katie and Archer notice them placing their hands on the humans and disintegrating the humans and taking on the appearance, which means they are assimilating, they are assimilating human DNA way too quickly and they're killing people in the process so this is obviously very bad so while katie and archer are at the store and the luxon are assimilating to other people's dna katie feels the all so familiar tingle at the back of her neck and thus damon has to be here so like an idiot she runs and goes to find damon except dawson gets to her first and zaps her and that is when it goes pitch black and we pick up with Damon. So when we transition to Damon, we see that he is right now in a mansion that has been taken over by Luxon and he is connected to every single Luxon in his near proximity. He can hear their thoughts and their wishes and see how they're discovering what a blender is or how to work a TV. And it can be very frustrating. And for this reason, he can't think the thoughts that he wants to think because then they'll know that he is not really with them. And that is also a problem because this is more pronounced when he's in his pure Luxon state than when he's in his human state. And so for this reason, he likes to stay in his human state. Damon approaches Dawson and punches Dawson for hurting Katie and bringing Katie back to the complex because Damon does not want her here because she's in a very hostile location. And at that point, I'm like, oh my god, Katie and Damon are finally back together. Yay! But it's so sad. But it's not like how we want it. We're basically going to revert back to douchebag Damon. At this point, Damon is brought into the huge conference room in the mansion. And there we have Sadie, the annoying Luxon, who's trying to flirt with Damon. And Roland, the Luxon who seems to be leading this group of Luxon right now. So at this point, because they know that Katie is with Damon, they want to know who is Katie, what is she, and what's their connection. And so basically, D comes out of nowhere and she is sipping their Kool-Aid and she tells them everything. She tells them that Katie was mutated by Damon and that Damon was in love with her. And eventually we get the, and then eventually Damon reveals that if Katie dies, he dies. At this point, they're also getting information about who Katie was with because they know that she was with Archer and D reveals that Archer is an origin the product of a Luxon male and a hybrid female. But the only information that Dee, Dawson, and Damon seem to be keeping from the Luxon around them is that Beth is pregnant. At the end of this meeting, Damon goes to check on Katie and things go haywire because Quincy is in the room with Katie. And at this point, Damon threatens Quincy and says, if you even look at her, I will kill you. And Quincy's like, I'm gonna tell Robin. And Damon's like, yeah, you do that, you do that. Like, you know the Damon we know and love. And so when Damon is alone with Katie, he heals her and then he has to leave because obviously he loves her too much. His emotions are just too high and my heart breaks. 
cut to Katie finally waking up after being zapped by Dawson. And D is there, except she's not so nice, D. And D is responsible for getting Katie into the room to meet Roland and Sadie. But because D has been drinking the Kool-Aid, she's so harsh to Katie, threatens to push her down the stairs, and insinuates that Damon and Sadie are a thing. So, we enter into the room, and Damon has, has to revert back into douchebag Damon, pretend he doesn't care about Katie, and that he never loved her. So when Katie first sees Damon in this mansion, she doesn't know that he has reverted back to douchebag Damon. So she's like, Damon, Damon, and then he doesn't answer her until she walks up to him, says Damon again. He literally picks her up and places her further away. Sadie places her hand on Damon, and Katie's like, get your hands off of him. I was like, and I, ooh, and I, oh, and at this point, Sadie's like, doesn't look like he likes you too much now. And I'm just like, oh, Sadie, shut up. But it's okay. She gets her comeuppance. And at this point, I'm really sad because their love was so real. Uh, but then what happens is that Roland gets Quincy to try to assimilate Katie's DNA. And so Quincy gropes Katie and is like, well, can't assimilate her DNA. And at that point, Damon gets to work. He flips Quincy and is like, I told you not to touch her. Period. And I was like, yes, Damon. Yes, Damon. Yes, Damon. So then once Damon goes all, all luxing on Quincy, Damon is like, Katie is mine. And that's it. Point blank. Period. And Rollins says, okay, we get it. Just make sure that you and Katie are ready for the press conference tomorrow. And at this point, they're like, what is up? So Rollin sends Sadie to go help Katie change. And Damon's like, um... Let me go check on that real quick. And as he goes to the room, he sees that there has there are clothes strewn about. The mattress is messed up. The the bathroom the bedroom is all messed up. There are sheets and comforters and pillows just all strewn about. And when he gets into when he gets into the bathroom, he sees that a full on battle has commenced. And so when he gets into the into the room, he notices that Katie had scratched Sadie, and he's like, ah, kittens got claws, and I'm like, ah, ooh, yeah, I love Damon. And so at this point, after Sadie leaves the room, Damon is vulnerable with Katie and lets her know that he's just pretending and that he really doesn't feel this way, and he's sorry that he had to say all those hurtful things, but now they have to brainstorm for what could possibly happen at the conference. So on the way to the conference, they put Damon, D, and Dawson into their own limousine and they put Katie in the limousine with Sadie and Roland. But beyond this moment out in the world, the world has literally fallen to crap. The news reporters are on TV like, I think this is extraterrestrial? And they can't even believe they're saying extraterrestrial and everything's collapsed and all the big cities, you know, H-Town, you know. They are in danger because all the Luxon have targeted those cities and they are assimilating into, strate they are strategically assimilating themselves into people that are old enough to have children and in people that are in places of power. And at this point, Roland and Sadie are trying to pick Katie's brain and figure out what she knows. But when Katie doesn't become so forthcoming, the other Luxon in the, in the limo restrains her. So once Katie realizes that she's literally restrained, she has no choice but to tell them. She tells them about Archer and how she met, met him in Daedalus. And then Sadie's like, thank you for telling us that. But I think you're forgetting a couple of things like Luck and Beth and the baby. <gasps> and at that point, it clicks. Katie realizes that Sadie is an origin. Bum, bum, Ga? Which means she's been reading everyone's mind this entire time. Ah! And at this point, Rollin says, yep, and we're planning to make it. And we're planning to make a show of your love for Damon and Damon's love for you and Dawson's love for Beth by outing you and killing you. Isn't that great? So at this point, Katie pictures people twerking. Literally, she pictures people twerking. And Sadie's like, hmm? And then she uses the source to flip the limousine. Yeah, yo. And at this point, Damon's watching from his limo back there like, hmm? What's going on? So at this point, things have hit the fan. And Damon, Dawson, and Dee hop out of their limo, and they go to assess the limo that Katie, Roland, and Sadie are in. 
and at first Sadie swings out, then Rollins swings out, and then all the Luxon are swarming around them and they have to fight. Ba 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 boom with the source. And at this point, Katie, Dawson, Damon, they're doing pretty well. They're doing pretty well, but they can't take on all the other Luxon. But it's okay, because at the last minute, the government shows up. Dun, dun, dun. And they've got their P.E.P. Take out Sadie and Roland. And when you think they're about to take take out Dawson, Damon, and Katie, D-Flood, by the way, when you think they're about to take those people out, Nancy says, you better get in this helicopter. And I'm like, wow, never thought we'd see you again, but I'm kind of glad, sis. And where does she take them? She takes them to a base where Luck... Archer and Beth are waiting for them. And so when they see Luck, Luck says, I I have Nancy in, I have Nancy in check. Don't even worry about that. Some of the military men take Dawson to check up on Bethany. And Luck takes Damon and Katie to the control center room with Archer. And at this point, it is revealed that the reason Luck has Nancy on a tight leash is because Luck has hidden all of her origins and will only give them back after she cooperates. So then at this point, we get some really intense news. And this is the news that Damon and Katie did not receive the Daedalus serum. They received the Prometheus serum. And that means that Damon and Katie are not actually linked. Therefore, if one of them dies, the other one will still live on. And that changes everything. So after this revelation, Damon and Katie decide to check up on Dawson and Beth. And Beth is doing much better. She doesn't look as sickly or as tired. And she's taking the same vitamins that Katie and, and Archer almost got for her before the Luxon arrived. Isn't irony great? And so Katie is looking at them and she's wondering... Aw, uh, do David and I look as in love as they do? And Archer's like, yes, you do. Please stop. So then Katie and Damon leave, and they're talking amongst themselves, and then we get to the fatal line, where Katie let out a breath she didn't know she was holding. That line appears in pretty much all YA books, and this is only the first time we see this line in this book. So, But more importantly, when Katie and Damon are talking, Damon finally has a light bulb go off and he realizes that Ethan Smith is also an origin. Mind blown. So then the next day, Archer takes Katie and Damon to the command center and Luck is there, Nancy is there, and General Eaton is there. And General Eaton is putting Nancy in her place and saying, yeah, we disabled Daedalus because you were acting a fool. And he was like, yeah, because my daughter has married a Luxon. What? Intergalactic relationships? We love it. After that revelation, someone says five minutes, and Katie's like, five minutes until what? And they reveal what they're doing to stop the Luxon. And they reveal that they are dropping non-nuclear E-bombs that transmit an electromagnetic pulse. And while this may seem good because it is going to kill all the invading Luxons, it is also going to kill innocent people that have heart defects, pacemakers, and other situations, as well as disrupt every piece of technology in the surrounding area. And because the Luxon invaded in major cities like Los Angeles, Houston, this is going to be really bad and society is going to degress by several centuries. And so at this point, Katie says, well, there has to be another way. And General Eaton says, well, there isn't. And at this point, Damon's little brain comes up with yet another idea. And that idea is to contact the Arum to kill the invading Luxon. And that is because the Luxon that have invaded hardly have any idea on how to fight in a room and therefore will be will be destroyed. And everyone's like, well, will this even work? And Archer says, I know someone who can get in contact with someone who can ask about the Arum. With everything that has been happening, everything that Katie has seen, because she saw the, the non-nuclear E-bombs being dropped in Los Angeles. She goes outside for some breath and stumbles upon Luck comforting Nadia. And Nadia is a human girl that he's met and that he's fallen in love with, except she has cancer and that's why he wanted the LH-11 because he was hoping they would cure her. But for right now, she's still really weak. And at this point, Katie understands Luck just a little bit more and we finally get to see the loving aspect of Luck besides the amazing, awesome, mobster type he is 
And Katie also realizes that he's the one with the Arum connection. And he says, yep, I got the people that can owe me a favor. And at this point, I'm thinking, that guy from the third book. What's his name again? Hunter? And then it, and then it cut to him saying, yeah, he owes me a favor. And his name is Hunter. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I knew it. It comes full circle. Woo, 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 bam. So. Damon, Katie, and Archer decide to take on this journey to try to contact the Arum to see if they can get them to fight off the invading Luxon. And so they have to drive from, from where they are all the way to... Also, I find it really interesting to note this parallelism, this growth, this transition. Because if we look at book one, one of the main enemies was the Arum, but now they're going to the Arum for help. Damon, Archer, and Katie go to Georgia. And on their way to Georgia, they see all the cars on the side of the road that have been burnt beyond recognition with and without people in them. They see cars that have been abandoned for people trying to get away, and it's really heartbreaking. And they also get encountered by another group of Luxon, and they have to fight off those Luxon in order to get to Georgia. And when they get to Georgia, they meet Hunter, Lore, and Serena, Hunter's girlfriend. And Hunter agrees to take them to see Lotho. Lotho is basically the king of room, and if they get Lotho on their side, then they have their Aram army. They have to take the tunnels from the Atlanta, Georgia airport, and they have to take them to the underground room lair. Bum, bum, bum. And when they get in there, it's like a wooden castle underground. Oh, it's so majestic. They get there, and they are trying to appeal to Lotho, and Lotho's like, I don't care. And so the first idea, Damon's idea, is to basically say the Arum suck and that they're and that they're under the thumb of the Luxon. And Archer seems back and be like, yeah, y'all are living underground, aren't you? But that doesn't work. And at this point, Katie's like, are you on crap? What is wrong with you people? And Lotha was like, don't you know what their people did to us? And Katie's like, and have you studied human history? We have done X, Y, and Z to X, Y, and Z people. But when the going gets tough, we stick together. And then once we fought off that, we go back to hating each other like the humans that we are. And at that point, I'm like, yes, Katie. Stick up for us humans. So at this point, Lotho agrees to give them the Arum army under one condition. That he can feed off of Katie. And Damon goes crazy. Damon is trying to get to Lotho, but he can't because you got Hunter and Archer holding him back. And then Damon and Katie have to go outside, have a conversation about how, although this is going to suck, they need to do this for the greater good of the people. And so they get taken back to Lotho's bedroom. And then we have that same line again where Katie let out the breath that she didn't know she was holding. And Lotho has Katie sit next to him. And then Damon's like, yep, sorry, can't try like I thought I could. Goes for Lotho. Lotho pins him to the wall with his powers. Katie's like, okay, can you just beat up me now? So we can get this over with. And then Lotho places Damon back and starts cackling. Because guess what? He never intended to feed on Katie. He just wanted to see how far they were going to go. That is emotional and mental abuse. No. Can you believe that? Wow. That is mean. Once they are successful, they decide to link up with Lore and Serena, and they go crash at Lore's house. While they're at Lore's house, Lore, Serena, and Hunter go out to go fetch food, and they say, now we're only gonna be going an hour, so don't mess things up. And so Damon, Katie, and Archer are left in Lore's house, and shortly after, a bunch of Luxon show up to break this party apart, and spearheading that mission is D. At this point, D and Katie are fighting, and Archer and Damon are handling all the other Luxon. D throws Katie through a wall, through a wall, and is about to kill her until Katie reminds her about everything that their friendship meant to them, and about Adam and how Adam never would have wanted D to become this person. And at this point. Katie is finally broken through to D, and D breaks down, and Damon has to comfort her, and Katie's on the brink of death, so then he heals Katie, but it's great because now we have D, and D and Archer can continue to be the second best couple in this franchise. Lore, Hunter, and Serena come back and is like, what did you do to my home? We were gone for one hour, and you did all of this. 
But to be fair, the Luxon did show up unannounced and try to attack them. So that happened. But at this point, D, Archer, Katie, and Damon are thinking. And they're thinking that for the people that do know how to interact with Aram, they're just going to leave, like Ethan. And so they make a plan to go and take out Ethan on their own. So they're also going to go to Virginia, where the Arum are also going to come within two days. And so Lore is like, well, we can't go with you because the government hates us, the Aram hates us. So here, we'll just give you these nice fancy guns that will help you kill the Luxon. And they're like, and you can leave because you've already done enough damage to our home. And so they take the weapons and they get on the road again. On the road again. They're on the road again. Also, side note, Dee is mad because Damon and Katie are married, but they didn't tell her. So she's like, uh, I'm playing your next one. So, Damon, Katie, Dee, and Archer are about to get back on the road when Archer gets a call from Luck saying that Nancy has disappeared. And this is upsetting because Luck planned to kill Nancy so that Nancy would never do any more damage to the origins and to humanity in general. So we have to find Nancy. So the plan is for Dee and Damon to pretend to go back into the hazy eyes of the controlling Luxon and go back and get in the embraces of Ethan and kill Ethan. So they drive to West Virginia and they arrive back at their house and Katie goes into her house. And she sees her mom and she hugs her mom. But it isn't her mom. A Luxon has taken over her mom's body, which means that her mom is gone forever and she's never coming back. And Katie breaks down and cries and her pain almost brings the house down and Damon has no idea how to comfort her, but he's just holding her, trying to comfort her. And when Dee comes over, she's just trying to comfort Katie as well. And it's it's so heartbreaking. And Ethan shows up and he reveals that he is the big bad guy behind all of this chaos, all this destruction. And when they want to find out why, he says it was for simple revenge for what happened to him, his parents, and everything under Daedalus. That he was going to punish all of humanity for the actions of Nancy and a bunch of other corrupt people. And at this point, Katie is so furious because her mother is dead because of petty revenge and then the government shows up they break through the windows and Katie's like there's a door right there and at this point Ethan tries to get away but Katie kills him their house is surrounded by Luxon the government people go back out through the windows and start fighting the Luxon they're firing the PEPs the Luxon they're firing the source it's a battle Katie sees an origin and she's in the fight with the origin she runs with the origin for miles to the rocks to the Seneca rocks until realizing that she has run straight into the colony Damon comes behind her and is like we're gonna do this together we're gonna fight together and if this is the end this is the end for both of us together but it doesn't come to that because then Lotho comes through and the Aram have a feast and they wipe out the Luxon ah! after they wipe out the Lux the Luxon in West Virginia they go on in Virginia and Washington DC to end the madness and so once Katie sees that the Arum have arrived she runs again and she runs to the spot where Damon saved her from being attacked by the bear and we're reminded of the story of Princess Snowbird and Damon reveals that when he was talking about someone's beauty being only surpassed by their beauty inside he was talking about Katie and that made my heart swell so then they get back to the the house and D and Archer are there and they get the announcement that the Arum were successful and that the invading Luxon are either dead or they're leaving Earth in general and it's over. Except Katie still has to get over the grief of her mom. And so in order to do that the day after she goes out and she's trying to redo the garden outside of her house with her mom and she's pulling weeds and at this point Archer gets a call from Luck and apparently Nancy was spotted in Georgia a couple of days ago 
which means that Nancy had time to also arrive in West Virginia. And at this point, Damon is worried. He's so scared that Nancy is going to show up and do something to Katie. He goes outside, and when he sees her, he hugs her, and he's just so happy until Nancy shows up out of nowhere and is so bent on getting her revenge and making Damon suffer that she tries to kill Katie, except he takes the bullet for Katie, and he goes down. And Katie's heart is breaking all over again, and Dee's heart is breaking again, and they think Damon is going to die. And I'm so mad because Nancy did that, but then D kills her, so. We wake up, and they've been transported to the hospital, and they have resources, and Damon's okay, and Katie's okay, and the gang's okay, you know, except for the people that died in the previous books. But for the most part, the gang's okay. And at that point, we end the book. Until we get to the epilogue, which is 11 months later, which means that the baby has been born. Ah! Damon, Katie, D, Archer, Dawson, Bethany, and Ashley, their baby. They are living in Colorado. Damon and Katie are attending the University of Colorado. Katie has relaunched her book vlog. And everything's great. Katie's, Katie's got a big old rock on her finger because she's getting married for real. Archer and Dee come over and they pick up Damon and Katie because they're going over to see Bethany, Dawson, and Ashley because Ashley is, of course, an origin and she's levitating herself. She's levitating objects and her eyes are doing that whole purple white thing. So they've decided it's best to keep her inside. So Dee and Archer show up and they talk about how Dee was fantasizing running over the waitress because she was looking at Archer. And we also talk about how Beth and Dawson had a girl instead of a guy origin because they usually only see guy origins. And all Katie can think of is Nessie and I'm like, Twilight reference, eh, eh, eh. Twilight, what started it all. So they go over to their house and they embrace Ashley and she's so cute and they're just like, ah! Because of all the help that they gave to General Eden, Katie, Damon, Dawson, D, all of them do not have to register under the ARP, which is the Alien Registration Program. Dawson has his little dad haircut, looking a little bit like Archer. Lux shows up out of the blue and is like, y'all had a reunion, y'all didn't invite me, what's going on? Eh. At this point, we can tell that what he had hoped to accomplish with Nadia didn't come to fruition, but now he's training the Origins. We don't know what he's training them, but... I think they're in a much better place than they were when they were with Nancy. And it's so beautiful that they named their baby Ashley after Ash because if Ash hadn't sacrificed herself for Beth, then Beth wouldn't be there and Dawson wouldn't be there and neither would Ashley. So, oh. And then Damon whispers the note that he wrote to her all those years back in math class. And then we end the series. Uh, so... I have have read this series before, this is one of my favorite series, and I'm just so happy that I got to reread it again because reading it now, I'm older, I'm in college, I think I understand a lot of things more thoroughly, and I also just, ah, I love good writing so much. And now, I can do my rankings, ooh, because... I really don't know how to rank these because these are really good, but uh, where am I going to do it? I'm going to have Opal, Opposition, Origin, Onyx, Obsidian. Thank you guys so much for watching my book review. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, click that bell notification so you don't miss out on when I post. And like always, if you need something to tie you over, feel free to indulge in these selections. And yeah, I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye!